Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about how to achieve your financial goals. This video was actually requested a while back and somebody asked specifically how I achieve my goals and a number of questions related to that, but I figured I would turn this into a how-to video. Financial goals honestly are just like any other goal, but I think a lot of times people have a harder time achieving them because they seem more difficult and it's something that's more taboo. People don't talk about finances as much as they do like weight loss or nutrition or those other common goals. I've been documenting my journey for over a year now here on YouTube so you can see that I have achieved quite a few goals so these are the things that have helped me to do that. Everybody is different but hopefully some of these tips will help you to stay on track. My first tip is to not set too many financial goals at once and basically what I mean by this is you're going to have tons of financial goals more than likely. You're gonna have long-term goals that you want to achieve and you'll want to go after them all at once. But if you do try to go after all of them at once, you're only going to make small progress in each of those areas rather than achieving one big goal at a time. So when it comes to finances, you can literally set so many goals that it becomes overwhelming. And, and I think that can become a problem because when it feels overwhelming, it feels impossible. And when something feels impossible, you just don't go after it at all. So you may wanna save for a down payment on a home. You may want to buy a new car. You may want to pay on your student loan debt, pay down your credit card debt, go on a big vacation, invest $10,000 this year. The list goes on and on. So unless you're somebody who's bringing in multiple six figures in a year or more than that, then it's probably not possible for you to go after every single one of those goals right now. When I was working on the outline of this video, I thought of the quote by David Allen where he says, you can do anything, but you can't do everything. It's kind of like Paula Pant's idea where she says, you can afford anything, but you can't afford everything, um, which, you know, give or take to that statement, but it's the same idea. I think it's best to take things a little bit slower initially because like I said, if you're going between 10 different goals at once, it's gonna be a lot harder to actually achieve any of them and you won't feel as good in the long run. So what I suggest you do is write down all of your financial goals, short term and long term, and then narrow them down based on your priorities. So for example, you guys know if you watch my videos that I would love to save for a down payment on a home. I would love to be investing aggressively, but right now I really wanna just focus on building my emergency fund to $6,000 and paying off all of my debt. So those are the two main focuses that I have. Of course I do invest a little bit, but it's not like I am making that a big goal of mine at this moment. So it's just really important to get clear on your priorities and then go after those first. My next tip is to create a plan. Luckily, financial goals are really easy to break down. For example, if you want to max out your Roth IRA this year, you need to put 500 a month to your Roth IRA. If you wanna pay down $24,000 of debt this year, you need to put at least 2,000 per month to that debt. But that is just one part of creating a plan. So I kind of did this with my video and I will link it down below on how I plan on paying off $40,000 this year because there's a lot more than just breaking down your goal. Depending on your situation, depending on your goal, it's also important to consider many other things. So if you have debt, what sort of debt payment plan do you wanna follow? Debt snowball, debt avalanche, the highest minimum payment. How much do you expect to spend? this year in all of the areas, like I did in my video. Do you have any extra income possibly coming in? Are there any big expenses that you could be expecting this year or in the next couple of years? How can you reduce your expenses? How can you increase your income? And so on. So it's important to create a nice solid plan. And just remember that when you create a plan, it does not necessarily mean that it's going to happen exactly like that. So don't let it discourage you if you fall off track in any sort of way, just create the plan, stick to it as best as possible, and then replan if necessary. Tip number three is do not underestimate the consistent small things in your journey. Now, those consistent small things can work in your favor or against you. So what I mean by this is if you're spending a little bit of money on going out to eat every day, that is going to work against you. In the moment, and maybe week by week, it doesn't feel like that much money, but by the end of the year, you're probably spending thousands of dollars on going out to eat. On the other hand, if you're saving just $5 a week or $20 a week, whatever it is, then you'll realize that 
by the end of the year, you have $1,000 saved or $5,000 saved, just depending on how much you're actually putting aside. But you don't need big lump sums of cash every single week or every single month to actually make progress. So I think people underestimate those small money moves. And so when they have an opportunity to save $5 or spend $5, it's seen as no big deal. But those small things truly compound and add up and can make a really big difference in the long run. And a really important part of achieving financial goals is consistency. So if you are somebody who's just all over the place with your finances, you're probably not going to see yourself achieving those goals. And this is another reason why Transfer Tuesday is really helpful for a lot of people. So even if it's only $5 that you're doing every week, the act of consistently saving $5 or just consistently saving in general is getting you into the habit of saving or whatever it is that you're going after, paying off debt, saving, investing. And that's very important because that way, when you come across more money, you are going to see that you can start to save more on a consistent basis and then you will just snowball from there. So even if you can only afford $1 to put towards savings or to put towards your money goal this month, then do that. That It's something, it is something and you just put it in your high yield savings account, put it in your investment account, put it wherever you need to and that is one little start to your financial journey and from there it can continue to grow. My next tip is to surround yourself with finances and talk about them frequently. The idea here is to focus on the right things, which for you if you're setting a financial goal is finances. Since the beginning of my financial journey, which was like 2017, mostly 2018, I have listened to hundreds of hours of financial content. So that was through podcasts and YouTube. I've also let, read quite a few books and articles. So from the beginning, I was listening to a ton of Dave Ramsey. Now I don't completely agree with what Dave Ramsey says, but I listened to hours. I could literally say exactly what he was about to say each time somebody called, each new call that I was listening to. And what this did was just keep me on the right mindset. I was listening to people call about their debt. I was listening to people call about savings and even hearing people do their debt free screams was super motivating for me. So I was constantly putting this content into my ears and keeping my goals in mind. Now I listen to podcasts like Choose FI or Bigger Pockets Money because those mostly talk about financial independence and that is my ultimate goal. So I know how to pay off debt now. I know how to save money, but the next thing is investing. And so I'm constantly learning about that and constantly listening to those things because it keeps me really motivated to keep pushing through because that's my ultimate goal. Also, I talk about money a lot. <laughs> Obviously I have this YouTube channel, so that is a great way to talk about money if you don't have people in your life to talk about it with. But I do talk about finances quite frequently with my boyfriend, uh, sometimes with my family or friends. It's something that's really important to me and I want to make finances a normal conversation with people in my life. So I do talk about it a lot and that just keeps it fresh in my mind as well. Plus it kind of helps when you have somebody in your life that is also interested in talking about it because then you guys can feed off of each other and share each other's goals and that's beneficial as well. My next tip is to revisit your financial goals on a regular basis. So I actually write down all of my goals every single week and I do this off the top of my head. I have a weekly meeting with myself every week <laughs> and I can put a link down below to my blog post of where I talk about this, but part of that is writing down my goals and this is financial goals or just any goals, but honestly finances are a big part of my life, so that is the main thing that I'm focused on. And when I write down my goals, I don't look back at the previous week to try and remember. I think off the top of my head, what are my financial goals? And I write them in that moment because then I know I actually want to achieve those and they are my true financial goals because I don't have to go back and look at what I wrote in previous weeks. It's just a way for me to remind myself of my why and to, again, keep it fresh in my mind. There have been multiple studies on writing down your goals and the benefits of writing them down and actually achieving them, uh, which I do find to be true. I have found that me writing down my goals does help me to, or I don't know, I achieve my goals when I write them down. Um, but obviously you have to take action on everything still, but just constantly reminding yourself of them will make sure you take action on them. 
My next tip is to make it easier for you to achieve your goals. Paying off debt and saving money can already be difficult enough for many people. So I suggest automating those things so you can automate your payments if you need to. You can automate your savings. You can go to your employer and have them direct deposit a specific amount to savings and the other percentage to your checking account. Same thing goes for your retirement. You can set up the auto contribution to your retirement accounts through your employer if that's offered to you. You could also set this up on your own. So this is what I do with my sinking funds, including my emergency savings. Uh, on the first of the month, I have it scheduled for the sinking funds to pull from my checking account. Each amount is specific to each account and it just goes through automatically. I don't even have to think about it. And another way to make it easier on yourself when it comes to your finances is to remove any temptations if necessary. So this may be unfollowing people on social media that have a large influence on you and your shopping. Maybe you need to get off of social media completely and also unsubscribing from emails that tempt you to go shopping. This is the same thing with like if you're actually going to a physical store, if you have a weakness at Target, you're going to Target and you spend hundreds of dollars even though you were just supposed to pick up, you know, some cleaning wipes, then stop going to Target. Like I promise you'll be fine. Don't go to Target. Uh, make a list. Maybe you need to order online and have it delivered to you if necessary and just do what it is that will keep you in control. My final tip is to find what keeps you motivated. Everybody is motivated in different ways. Obviously, motivation is not something that is lasting, but it's something that is kind of necessary when you're on your debt-free journey or any financial, if, if you're going after any financial goal. I do have a video on how to stay motivated on your debt-free journey, but really all of those tips could be applied if you're investing or trying to save money at this time. For myself, I find those debt trackers to be really motivating as well as listening to financial podcasts or just watching financial videos because I learned so much and I can envision my future of how things are going to look based off of what I'm learning. However, some people prefer to reward themselves when they reach certain milestones of their goals and that's perfectly okay too. It's just important for you to determine what keeps you motivated and keeps you going and then stick with that. Those are all of my tips for achieving your financial goals. I have found that the longer you work toward your financial goals and actually achieve them, the easier it gets. So once you save up your emergency fund, you're going to open up more money to be spent on investing and paying off debt, etc. So really achieving one goal allows you to build momentum for the next goal. And I had said this before, but it's just a snowball effect on everything else. Be sure to acknowledge the things that you have achieved, the things you have accomplished when it comes to your financial goals, and just get excited about this because it actually becomes really fun and exciting once you get into that better situation and you get into better habits and it can be a really great thing. Comment down below if you would add anything to this list. Thank you as always for watching. I do have a blog post version of this and it will be linked down below and I will see you in my next video.